Welcome to Fighting for Fair NZ, the YouTube channel produced by the concerned residents of Bangkok Crescent, Wellington, who oppose the installation of a mobile phone tower just meters from family homes and children's play areas by 2 degrees. Despite 128 residents representing over 95% of the street saying no to the tower, 2 degrees doesn't care and is determined to put profits before the community and proceed with the installation. In this video, we're going to debunk 2 Degrees' claim that mobile phone base stations do not negatively affect property values. Since first learning that 2 Degrees would be installing a phone tower against our wishes and without consultation, we began contacting them with a wide variety of questions that dealt with site selection, visual impact of the structure, liability, property devaluation, health concerns and technical inquiries around frequencies, power output and direction. Unfortunately, most of our questions were ignored by their head of property. However, Two Degrees did eventually issue a combined summary that attempted to answer community questions, one of which was whether they would accept any liability for any property devaluation that may occur as a result of the phone tower's close proximity to residential housing. Of course, they refused to discuss the liability component, which Wellington City Council informed us lies with Two Degrees, but they did attempt to tackle devaluation. In their response titled, Won't the site devalue my property? Two degrees simply rely on a good old-fashioned logical fallacy, the appeal to authority. There's no evidence to suggest that sites like the one we are building will impact property values. Research studies in the past, including by Auckland University, have confirmed this. Oh, thank you, Two Degrees. We can all sleep well tonight. If some unnamed research in the past, including by a university, support your claim, then it must be true, right? Wrong. The claim is demonstrably false. In fact, the majority of studies not funded by the wireless industry do show property devaluation, and these findings are mirrored by the assessment of expert property appraisers. Of the incredibly vague studies in the past that Two Degrees rely on to try and convince Kiwis that no devaluation will take place after they install a phone tower meters from your home, we were only able to find a total of three studies ever conducted in New Zealand that show no evidence for property devaluation. Surprise, surprise, two were funded by Telecom, now known as Spark, and cannot be relied upon due to the fact that the results are biased. And the third is from a 2010 Auckland University paper titled the Impact of Proximity to Cell Phone Towers on Residential Property Values by Filipova and Rem, a study I doubt two degrees expected us to read. Whilst the study was indeed unable to establish a relationship between cell towers and house prices with the exception of armed monopole towers located in residential areas due to such towers' acute visual disamenity in Auckland, it cannot be relied upon to support the claim made by two degrees for the following reasons. Firstly, the authors acknowledged that a perception of risk, irrespective of whether or not it is supported by empirical evidence, may invoke environmental stigma which has the potential to lower property values. Despite this, their study did not take the perception of risk into account. Secondly, an earlier study by Sandy Bond that did factor in the perception of risk found that overall respondents in Christchurch would pay from 10 to 19% less to over 20% less for a property if it were in close proximity to a cellular phone base station. Thirdly, a devaluation of up to 20% is mirrored in Filipovas and Rem's own literature review when they acknowledged that only a handful of empirical studies have investigated the impact of proximity to cell phone towers on property values. And as a result, it is appropriate to briefly review research on the impact of power lines and pylons on property values, which are associated with similar health and visual impact concerns. And what does the available literature say as outlined by Filipova and Rem? In short, adverse value effects due to proximity to a high voltage transmission line are observed in most studies. Previous studies found high price reductions between 1 and 20%, with this price discount reducing rapidly with increasing distance from the power pole. Overall, the negative price effects become negligible around 250 meters. Fourthly, Filipova and Rem openly state that a major limitation of their study was the fact that they did not even discern between houses from which you could see a tower and houses which could not. It's possible that the majority of residents sampled were completely unaware they were living near a mobile base station as they couldn't see it. A fifth issue is that this study was undertaken in 2010. One year prior to the International Agency for Research on Cancer classifying the type of radiation emitted by phone towers as a Class 2b possible human carcinogen. 
This classification added greatly to the perception of risk that Filipova and Rem acknowledge can have a devaluing effect on property, so any findings prior to this ruling cannot possibly be used to support two degrees claims now. And lastly, the overwhelming majority of studies published after 2011 all find that phone towers have a devaluing effect on properties within about 300 meters. For example, a study published in 2018 on the impact of cell phone towers on house prices in Brisbane, Australia concluded, the results revealed that proximity to cell phone towers negatively affects house values, decreasing as the distance from the tower increases. A suitable compensation program for nearby property owners is therefore suggested as being an appropriate policy response. Whilst a suitable compensation program for nearby property owners would be appropriate for the residents of Bangkok Crescent, Two Degrees has refused to answer any questions put to them thus far in regards to compensation for devaluation and simply repeat the industry mantra, there is no substantiated evidence that sites like the one we are building will impact property values. Another study from the same year on wireless towers and home values in the United States concluded that for properties located within 0.72 kilometers of the closest tower, results reveal significant social welfare cloths with values declining 2.46% on average and up to 9.78% for homes within tower visibility range compared to homes outside tower visibility range. In aggregate, properties within the 0.72 kilometer ban lose over $24 million. And in Switzerland, Banff Edel looked at the impact of cell phone towers on rents in Zurich and found a significant decrease in rents of about 1.5% on average. So in New Zealand, Australia, the United States and Europe, the studies demonstrate a very clear pattern. Mobile phone towers devalue property and their devaluing effect only becomes negligible after 300 meters. If you look at Bangkok Crescent, you can see just how many properties 2 degrees will potentially devalue within 300 meters of their installation site. The academic research is clear, but what do expert property values have to say on the topic of devaluation? The Burgoyne Appraisal Company issued a report based on more than 30 years of professional appraisal experience in 2017 that stated, There has been significant research regarding the question of the impact on residential property values from construction of cell phone towers in neighborhoods. While the magnitude of impact varies, the studies uniformly indicate that there is a significant impact on residential property values from the installation of cell phone towers. Not surprisingly, the studies that show little or no impact are universally commissioned by and paid for the telecommunications industry. And not surprisingly, it's these very studies that Two Degrees chose to mislead the residents of Bangkok Crescent who are concerned about the impact of having a cell phone tower installed just meters from their property. However, there is at least one point of agreement between the studies relied on by two degrees to support their dubious claim and the majority of studies that find devaluation occurs, and that is that a perception of risk, irrespective of whether or not it is supported by empirical evidence, may invoke environmental stigma which has the potential to lower property values. This then begs the following questions. Is there currently a perception of risk capable of invoking environmental stigma? And if so, is this perception of risk likely to increase and thus further amplify the devaluing effects already established? There has been a general perception of risk ever since the International Agency for Research on Cancer, which forms part of the World Health Organization, classified radio frequency electromagnetic fields as a class 2b carcinogen, which means it's possibly carcinogenic to humans. Since 2011, several key studies have demonstrated that RF radiation is both a co-carcinogen, meaning that it actively promotes the growth of cancer, and also that it causes cancer at levels currently permitted by NZ safety guidelines, in addition to a huge range of other health effects. In 2010, Tillman et al. found a co-carcinogenic effect of lifelong UMTS exposure in female mice subjected to pretreatment with ethyl nitrosuria. In layman's terms, what the study found was that chronic exposure to 3G cell phone radiation can promote the growth of tumors, thus speeding up the growth and spread of cancer. These findings were confirmed in a replication study in 2015 by Lurchell et al., who improved the study design and found tumor-promoting effects at very low levels. We could confirm and extend the originally reported findings. Numbers of tumors of the lungs and livers in exposed animals were significantly higher than in sham exposed controls. 
In addition, lymphomas were also found to be significantly elevated by exposure. A clear dose response effect is absent. We hypothesize that these tumor promoting effects may be caused by metabolic changes due to exposure. Since many of the tumor promoting effects in our study were seen at low to moderate exposure levels, and thus well below exposure limits for users of mobile phones, further studies are warranted to investigate the underlying mechanisms. Our findings may help to understand the repeatedly reported increased incidences of brain cancer in heavy users of mobile phones. In 2018, the National Toxicology Program in the United States released the results of their 10-year, $30 million study that sought to establish whether mobile phone radiation could cause cancer. The results found clear evidence that mobile phone radiation can cause cancer at non-thermal levels. However, our safety standards, by the way, only recognize health effects occurring thermally. The NTP findings were supported by another major study in 2018 undertaken by the Ramazzini Institute that sought to conduct the largest long-term study ever performed in rats on the health effects of radiofrequency radiation. The study concluded, the Ramazzini Institute findings on far-field exposure to radiofrequency radiation are consistent with and reinforce the results of the NTP study on near-field exposure, as both reported an increase in the incidence of tumors of both the brain and heart in exposed sprag dorley rats. These tumors are of the same histotype of those observed in some epidemiological studies on cell phone users. These experimental studies provide sufficient evidence to call for the re-evaluation of IR conclusions regarding the carcinogenic potential of radiofrequency radiation in humans. As both the NTP and Ramazzini Institute findings provide sufficient evidence to call for the re-evaluation of IR conclusions, one has to wonder how great the devaluing effect would be should IARC reclassify the radiation emitted by cellular phone base stations as a probable cancer agent or simply carcinogenic to humans as some experts claim will happen. In summary, the two degrees claim that there is no evidence of property devaluation is false. The weight of evidence shows that property devaluation is most impactful within 300 meters of a base station and that this is a global occurrence. In addition, living within close range of a mobile phone base station that emits radiation currently considered to be possibly carcinogenic, and that this classification by IARC has the strong likelihood of being upgraded to probably carcinogenic or carcinogenic to humans in the next few years, will only exacerbate the amount of devaluation already known to occur. And whilst Two Degrees was very careful with their wording when they state that there is no research specifically on sites like the one we are building demonstrating property devaluation, as the mere perception of risk is widely agreed to result in property devaluation, the physical look of the base station is inconsequential as they all emit the same type of radiation and the cellular base station being installed by Two Degrees is visible to all residents on Bangkok Crescent. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel and remember to share this video if you're a concerned New Zealand citizen who think that telco should not be allowed to install mobile phone base stations without consultation just meters from family homes.